Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars. And I had some thoughts today about corporate ethics and corporate responsibility to the, to the global welfare uh, that I'd like to share with you just by way of um, just by way of one avenue of approach that I wish there are many. Um, I was thinking about how much power the corporations, the global corporations have right now in the world and how quite frequently they see their responsibility to be to their shareholders and to their boards and presidents rather than rather than to the global good. So the, so the issue that I see right now is that in some contexts and at least uh, the corporations are uh, are striving for the good of their of a small group of people rather than for the good of the world see and so and in my opinion the good of the world is very important as well and so I thought back to the early history of, of the United States about how they were figuring out uh, about governance how they would deal with governance of or set up the government of the United States and back then back in the old days there was a, a somewhat parallel situation and that had to do with the, the, the great landholders of that era which George Washington for instance was one as opposed to all the other people actually at that time only all the other men in the original uh, colonies and who would govern and so naturally the people that had uh, most of the land, they were the ones that wanted to take control of the government of the United States. But there was also popular opinion to consider, right? And so what finally got hammered out was, was the Senate and the, and the House, two different governing bodies. The Senate originally was more like oriented towards the, the landholders and the, the house was more oriented toward the common man. And so, in the governance of the United States, it was hammered out an agreement that took into consideration both, both wealth and the free will of, of, of all the people, all the men in that case in the United States at the time. Now, so my question is whether this model could be used in the ethical governance of, of corporations. So in this instance, the, the quote-unquote Senate would be the, um, the board of directors of a corporation, the, the president, the um, shareholders, those would be, those would be the Senate. And, and since these corporations are global, uh, by proportionate uh, gross domestic product, I think that the members of each nation would also be able to participate in the governance of corporations in some fashion. So this is just an idea that I'm throwing out there. This is a thought I have of, of ways to help corporations come into a new understanding of their ethical responsibility with regard to the world. Okay, and along those lines, for, I'll just give you a for instance, which I don't know is true or not true. I'll just give you uh, like a what if, okay? What if the corporations of, the, uh, let's say the oil corporations or transport corporations or some, like some sector of corporations, or maybe all for all I know, had bought out all of the patents on alternate energy that were totally viable. Suppose they had done that. And suppose this issue that's so uh, controversial in this state of Colorado, this issue of fracking, you know, which is, according to some of the landholders, is ruining the well water of the ranches and the farms and so forth. This issue of, of extracting the last dollar of, of profit out of oil before oil is completely depleted from the globe um, could be alleviated by simply setting forth the, the patents of uh, alternate energy that are available but locked up, quote unquote, by the corporations. 
Could this be true that they're doing that? If it were true, then they would be acting against the common interests of globally. So, so this is just a what if. This is the kind of what if that we might be looking at in all the different sectors and all the different corporations to see how we could come to terms with the profit motive as compared with the, the ethical motive of uplifting and sustaining humankind. Well, that's all I have for you today. I wish you all, whether or not you're in business, the greatest opportunity for, for harmony and love and prosperity that is possible in the world today. Bye-bye. And then I'm thinking, uh, just paying attention to how in the United States at first it was, it was men that had the right to vote and um, later on women had the right to vote. And so there was like a loosening up of, into a, a greater form of democracy in that way. It could be that uh, gross domestic product, GDP, um, would uh, be amended later on uh, to population, a national population, so that would represent a greater, like, plebeian or democratic uh, base for the for the global uh, welfare aspect of uh, corporate responsibility. Uh, and so then at, at that point where, where the actual census of a nation came into play, uh, it, it would take the responsibility less out of the hands of the people that have the money to be shareholders and more into the hands of the people that are in desperate need of um, housing and livelihood and clean water and so forth. And I, I believe that that would, that would facilitate the, um, the moving into world harmony uh, greatly.